Jonah Jong, well done, follow up running from Honeychurch. Should have honoured Goods, didn't, but doesn't matter. Goes back to the skipper Murphy, that works this beautifully, the dogs. Murphy, a penetrating low one to Stringer. We've seen what this boy can do. Spindle. Turns Rance inside out. Spindle shooting! Here I go again! <laughs> Beautiful work got on the end of it all. Welcome to Mike on the Mic, a show hosted by none other than former AFL star and cult hero Jared Microphone Head Grant as he jumps on the mic for a good laugh with some quality guests. On this edition, it's the MP NFL flavour as JG catches up with some key people around Peninsula footy. First, a Sereno star pair, former Gold Coast teammate Mitch Hallahan and his brother James Hallahan, the skipper followed by a great chat with the new EDS coach, Ben Walker, who gives a great insight into what's going on at the moment. Enjoy. Welcome back to Mike on the Mic. Here we've got the MP NFL flavour. Two characters that probably aren't really liked that well out throughout the league. Um, boys, hopefully you're happy for me to say that. Got the Hallahan brothers, Jim and Mitch. Welcome. What are we calling your show? Mike on the mic. Mike on the mic. What Good to have us, Jazza. What do you I reckon? like it. What are your thoughts? I, I like it, mate. It, it suits your nickname, doesn't it? I reckon it's going better than Mitch's beard. <laughs> Spindles, come on, mate. Country Road, you, that a little sponsor down there? or? Yeah, they've just signed on at the Sharks for, the, for this year. Um, so I hope we can get some footy up and running and we can uh, get their apparel out, and, out there for you all. Oh, nice. so we've got Mercedes, <laughs> Mercedes <laughs> and Country Road now. Yeah, Mercedes is the personal sponsor. Okay, mate. Beautiful. <laughs> and uh, all right, we'll get into things. Jim, I wanted to talk to you about your knee, Rico, last year. What round did you do the knee? Eight, nine, ten. It was June. It was just before Queen's birthday, maybe round nine. And then got back. You did your calf before you actually got back, didn't you? Am I correct? Yeah. My male. Yeah. Correct? <laughs> That mate was very correct. That microphone is everything. Jesus. <laughs> no, I was due to play, I think, the second last round. So after like seven weeks, I was due to play and nick my calf because I probably put on a bit of weight. And <laughs> so that set me back a week or two. Obviously, on Mitch's diet those few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a good info. Yeah, so you, then what, how many games did you play before the granny? Two? Yeah, last round and the first final. And then grand final, let's be honest. After half time, no good. The knee? Yeah, no, I was. The knee? Yeah, no. Yeah, it was a knee, same knee. Well, actually, the, the doctor and surgeon actually said, had I had an ACL that was ripped doing that, what what happened in the granny? So it was what it was. It was just, it just blew up, but yeah. it's all right now. Yeah, so where are you, where are you at now? I was flying. <laughs> and now we're not playing. Oh. <laughs> so, Another ominous warning to the to the league. You spoke stupid, mate. You've been doing ten k's under half hour, under half an hour. Not bad, not bad. That's probably no. No, look, no we were going all right. It was all right. Um, I hadn't had a hiccup all preseason. Trained normally. Wasn't on any specific program either. But then yeah, now I don't know. I don't know what the setback will be. Yeah, right. Mm. Well, good That's on you, mate. Good. good to see you back out there. Thanks, mate. No worries. It's better off with me out there, eh? Pig, I'm moving on to you. I call you the pig. Did I give you the nickname pig? Uh, yeah, I think it might have been. It might have been you, actually. Yeah, come yeah. back after broke my foot. Went home for a couple of weeks. Yeah, he went home and started eating bath water and just got real big. <laughs> Came back. Rocket wasn't too happy. How it many AFL games all up? Uh, twenty-seven, I think. I don't know. I actually didn't look up the stats. I just wanted. I knew, I you'd, be able, I knew you'd be able to tell me. Twenty six or twenty seven? You know, you would know. I come in, I don't count a few of them. Oh, you could probably you could probably tell us the average disposals in those games if we had to go through it. Quite a few. I got dropped being a lot of leading the disposal getter. You a bit hurt by that, are you, mate? <laughs> um. So you were at the Hawks basically their premiership years, all three? 
Uh, I was there for the first two, right. and then end of 2014, shipped up to the Suns. So, so you were there basically the, in the time. They beat with Fremantle. I oh, was just watching that before, actually. They beat Fremantle. Pardon? Yeah, you were there in a time where basically it was tough to break into. Yeah, real tough. Up to, That's up to the Suns under Rockets. Yes. Who, as I know, likes plays with speed. <laughs> so you probably landed <laughs> at the wrong destination. Well, uh, unique times, Jazz. I signed and they didn't have a coach. So that was they just sacked Blue McKenna um, and I had the meeting with the club and they're like, oh, you know, we've got a few candidates, but we're not at liberty to speak about it. So then my manager told me a few names. Rocket wasn't in those few names. And uh, good information. <laughs> I think a week later, Rocket signed and things were good. So that tour, <laughs> that, that tour you got, was that the same one I got where we got the show in the tin sheds? Yeah, it looked like I was going around my primary school again. <laughs> well, I, thought, like, I thought my primary school was almost better. <laughs> Um, and then uh, uh, it was, um, yeah, look, it was going from Hawthorne who had okay, yeah. a bit of lag here. It's like playing court, just oh. lagging. <laughs> you a bit of a gamer, are you, Jim? <laughs> no, he is, he is. <laughs> mate, should have seen me the other night. I was killing everyone. Nice to know, mate. Nice to know. <laughs> no, nah, but 2013 Liston, yes, had a good year, I had a consistent year, yes. Nice, mate. And then well, the MP NFL, MP NFL League medal? Yes. So you've got a couple of things in your wardrobe. Box Hill yeah, there's a couple of medals there. Box Hill Premiership player? Yeah, VFL Premiership and, as well. And and VFL loss in the Premiership year? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we won, won 2013 and lost to you in 2014. Um, thought we had you. It's about my four goals at three-quarter time. Ran out of legs, pig. I just couldn't stop the old spindle shanks. Yeah, Eddie Hab was probably a bit big for you, I reckon, that oval. <laughs> the square looked a lot bigger than what it is. Jim, you're a real estate agent. Um, tell you what, your Instagram's just, you know, just happy with yourself there. You've moved to a white fox. White fox, tell us about white fox. What do you want to know? Well, so you've always been based down the peninsula. And now you've moved out of there. I saw your little video the other day. Yeah, I'm in the big smoke. What did you think of the video first? Video was probably better than this interview so far. Um, <laughs> we, need a, we need some good production. I, know, I, no, thought, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to get into the big wide world, mate. I've, I've never been anywhere else but the little little Sorrento. So you're you living there now? Hey, say that again. You're living up there now, city? Hawthorne, yeah. So you travel? So I just travel to travel for for training? Yeah, travel for training. I've got property for sale down there as well, as well as in Melbourne. So it's sort of the best of both worlds. Yeah, scenario. Yeah. And what's your best? What's the best one on the market at the moment? I can, I can fit in with the Melbourne crew now. Just train once a week. Just give it. What's the best one on the market? Uh, four and a half, five in Sorrento. What's your? Address? That could be your sign on. That could be your sign on. What's your address? One ninety Ocean Beach Road. Bedroom, Sorrento. bathroom. Oh, Jesus, five bedroom, three bathroom. You should know this. You're an ex real estate agent, mate. North Four Bay, in or? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Jeez, you've been, maybe. You haven't sold it to me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the money. Uh, it's good. Uh, it's good you're still working, though, mate, because um, your brother over there is he's on hard times <laughs> at the moment. Is he? Mate, he's a professional gamer. Uh, well, I'm thinking about streaming my games. What are you going to go into? The co- one of those online gamer. Yeah, man. I, yeah, I saw Mitch Robinson doing the other day. I thought, geez, I might be all right at this. Pig, I'm going to go back to your footy career because I don't think people actually understand, and I've never really spoken about it or, or you know, told you how, how good of a player I actually think you were. Even that year at the Gold Coast, you played 14 games in the best 11 times, had three games at the end of the year, averaged 22 touches, and got delisted. <laughs> the special player does that <laughs> It's pretty ruthless Yeah and As we both know It's uh, it's a ruthless industry And um, uh, I guess Some of it comes down to timing Doesn't it You know I land at Hawthorne At what has been A celebrated era for them And then Move up the Suns And uh, You know You're there at the right time You know 
wrong place, right time type thing or, or what it, whatever it is? I actually probably had the most fun of, I've ever had in my last year up there, though. Oh, man, we had some fun that last year, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Oh, we were just training hard, Jim. <laughs> I, yeah, Did yeah. I have a breath? I would train. There was a few. There was a few um, Hollywood rumors flying around in that last year. <laughs> it was a few rumors, uh, Jazza. Yes. <laughs> Did Mitch cut one from the hood? We won't go down this path. Um, go back to you, <laughs> Jim. Graham Yates. Tell me about him. What's he brought to the club? He is a ripper. He is a ripper. I do. He always tells a story of um, turning Joe Green into a top five draft pick. Yep. Just from where you come. Yep. So, you know, it's good. <laughs> now, look, he's a ripper. Me and Mitch have known him for 10 years. We really like him. There's people there that don't like him, but uh, we we love him. He is a different character to what I remember him at um, the Singrays. At Sorrento, he is very well loved. Uh, all, all the young guys flock to him. Brings a wealth of knowledge and just helps Tappy on him because Tappy being a playing coach actually, well, we, we can't experience that now, but for him to actually just let go of the reins game day is going to be huge. And yeah, obviously, Yogi's got experience. Yeah, I think a, a senior coach, when you've got a playing coach, is, is you know, a good thing. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. like you said, my experiences with Graham personally were a bit different to you guys, but, you know, life goes on. I think he'll be a good acquisition for you guys. Well, yeah. I think the best part as well is, you know, we haven't had under 19s for a while. So he's been proven to be able to develop young kids. So I think that was the other part of getting him in, knowing we have a 19s this year. You know, he can work pretty closely with a few of those guys and hopefully fast track their development for us. Piglet, you won the league medal this year and from that came a draft nomination. <laughs> yeah. You have to nominate yourself. So you've done that. Now my mail says Port Adelaide was sniffing. I reckon you were just speaking to Dan Lonigan tonight before this. Am I right? No, you're wrong. Are you able to tell us yeah. what club was potentially interesting? Because it's over now. You're done. Yeah, it was a Victorian club. At Limited. I'll, I'll let you stew on that for a while. You can have, you can have, a, have a think and, and put your feelers out there and see how good that microphone is. Oh, to be honest with you, Pig, I'm not going to do any more research. It doesn't really <laughs> <laughs> I won't risk any sleep tonight. Um, your boxing career prior to footy? Yeah. What were you? 2-0 or 3-0? Five. Five? Yeah. Beaten up on five the what was your weight? Three knockouts in there too, Jazza. What was your were you welterweight or heavyweight? What were you? <laughs> Mate, oh, back then I was fighting at I think I had two fights at sixty eight kilos. <laughs> I was only fifteen. You'd be out of your weight division now. You'd be in all sorts. Yeah, and then, uh, <laughs> my last three were at seventy four. I bulked up there. Did you boys watch the Jordan doco? I did. Did you? I assume. Yeah, you were in America. So I, I was doing a bit of thinking when I was watching it and, you know, what could I, you know, bring out of that? And I I thought, you know, down there at Sereno, you've got your, you know, your Michael Jordan, your number one player in the league, Mitch Hallahan. And then you've got you've got your Scotty Pippen, your James Hallahan at 122nd. Is there any tension there or how are you feeling, Scotty? <laughs> Scotty, I like it, Jesus. Undervalued. Undervalued? Yeah, definitely. Just like Scotty was, huh? <laughs> not at all, not at all. We love it, mate. We're different players. We love it. It's um, pigs, pigs now the big king. But we've probably got a couple coming up to challenge a pig now. Leave a hockey don't go far as well. Like Lee, Lee's the number one man, so don't, don't forget about that. He'll tell you that. Don't worry. <laughs> all right. Scott. Now, <laughs> hidden talent. Well, have you done research? What do you What do you reckon, Jim? Look, you look nervous, Jim. <laughs> Pig photography. Back, you think you're a pretty good photographer? I, I don't think I'm pretty, I'm pretty good. I it's a hobby. Uh, I enjoy it. You're and gonna give yeah. a give a plug? No, I'll let you do that. This is your show. I think it's MJ Hallahan Photography, maybe. Something like that. that you're pretty spot on. Yeah. Nice, mate. Jim, what's coming for you here? Yeah, I, there could be many things. Talented a lot. So <laughs> my, sources, my sources 
Oh, we haven't got to pick the sweetest tour again. If you have four light beers, you're not a bad singer. Where did this come from? Yeah, there's there's some karaoke footage. <laughs> I've just heard I'm you're pretty happy with yourself. Not don't punch out a bad tune. I'm a shocking singer, but I but I do I put myself out there, Joe. Which is not very often. Very professional down there at, at Fox Ridge. <laughs> now, boys, the se- so the seasons obviously. Where do you boys think we're going to play this year? You're going to say that again, it cut out, a bit of a lag. Sorry. You, no. boys, <laughs> you boys think we're going to play this year? I don't, no. I don't think we'll play. No, I, I can't see it happening. I hope we do. What are those oh, things bloody they run for? <laughs> well, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to strip weight off so I can have a good year, half year. And we're yeah. probably not going to play. You're just looking at the bloke next to you and thinking, oh, I don't want to get to that weight. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm down to 92. I've dropped three or four. <laughs> Jazza, don't go throw rocks in glass houses again, all right? Now, this is like the point of the year where I start getting text messages a few weeks into the year just before, you know, the deadline of um, where the players can, you know, what's it called? The What's it, what's it called? Tra- where it, the uh, transfer yeah, yeah. window? Yeah. yeah. EPL. How long until you blokes start messaging me to come down to Sereno? Well, Jazza, I tried, and then you come down to Sereno about two weeks later, and you sat under a highball as a third man in defence. And <laughs> shit, <laughs> you, you took off quicker than anyone else. And that moment on, I was like, "No, nah, we don't want you here anymore." I was almost killed that day. <laughs> <laughs> Who was coming? I was heard. I you heard the bird. Jim was on the bench that day and he sent out the message, Grant's telling us up, someone knocking him out. <laughs> Mate, we, we, we don't have any thugs. And then Jim, <laughs> Jim comes to me after the game and says, oh, I hope you're all right. We got the win. We got the win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you pepped up pretty quick in the room, so you had a couple of beers, you were all right? Yeah, I probably shouldn't have those beers and I probably shouldn't have drove home. <laughs> 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 well, you ducked out. You didn't want to see us. Hey, we were, what, the pig? Yeah, the pig, pig was gone. I had a beer with you. One. I think I bought you that beer too. Respectfully, as you should. Like that time we went to the footy and you made me shout 18 rounds before you even considered buying one. Hey, we've both been under hard times since we got the ass. <laughs> <laughs> nah, boys, that's all i got for you. Thanks for coming on. Um, it's always good to have a laugh with you too. Um, Hopefully some people see the uh, softer side of you two, not sledging on the field. So, Thanks, boys. And, uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Oh, thanks, Jazza. Welcome back to Mike on the Mic. We've got another MP NFL flavour. Uh, newly appointed EDFL Aspinall coach, Ben Walker. Walks, welcome. Thanks, Jared. Thanks for having me. Is it is the nickname Walks or what do you get down there? Uh, walks, uh, a lot of my mates call me Tex for, you know, the old old school days, but, uh, yeah, there are a couple that go around. I'm going to stick with walks, mate, because I can see, I'll just be like, well, what did he tell me the nickname was? So I'm sticking with walks, mate. <laughs> um, congratulations, first of all, on the appointment. Um, tell us a little bit about your coaching career to date. I think you were the, obviously the assistant coach last year and have coached at Sky previously. Yeah, so um, I joined up at Sky, or I, I had a lot of my playing career at Fale Aspendale um, from a from basically a junior through to a 28 when I left, and I left um, and, and went to Sky as the assistant coach or, or playing assistant coach, and then uh, did that for four years, and then uh, playing coach for four years at Sky. So um, took a year off, and, and then joined back up, uh, joined back up at Eddie as the assistant last year. So. Well, I was very excited for the year coming up, but um, obviously we're all in the same boat now. Yeah, mate. Um, premiership player there? Yeah, uh, dual premiership player. Two-time, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, 99 and 2000. Very fortunate um, as a kid to go into a, a pretty good side at the time. Um, so, yeah, they were, they were obviously very exciting times and it set a, a bit of a precedent and then I didn't win one since, uh, or not a senior one, since 2000. So, um Played a fair while. I think I got to about 36 and thought, I've got to give it up. It's uh, 
I'm getting too long in the tooth. Is there a 20 year reunion? Uh, there was a 20 year reunion last year for 99. One, one this year? And, and yeah, we should have been one this year. So we're actually, um, EDS is celebrating 100 years of uh, existence this year as well, which again has, has suffered a bit of a blow. But um, yeah, back to back reunion. So last year was pretty good, albeit. Uh, I was up in the box and then joined the boys when they were um, they were pretty liquored up by the time I got to them. So that was entertaining. <laughs> As all the reunions at footy clubs are, it's always enjoyable, the uh, festivities that are going on. Normally you hear most of them for the day on the field. Yeah, well, they were locked up in the rooms and uh, obviously, Edie, whilst we're uh, about to get some new club rooms, we've... Uh, we still got some pretty nice rooms in there and they were locked up and we couldn't hear too much from them and uh, they were pretty rowdy towards uh, five, six o'clock, I can tell you. <laughs> Mate, um, coaching-wise, did you always want to coach or it's just kind of fallen into your lap that you were assistant last year and thought, why not? No, it's something that I've always aspired to. I um, My first coaching job was was as a 16-year-old, so uh, me and my... Uh, my really good mate Cam Riley coached an under twelve side at Edith Vale Aspendale, so um, we were in uh, I think the first year of our of under eighteens, and uh, we dual coached a, a junior side, and and yeah, so it's always been something that's that's really interested me for for work. I, I certainly um, have been in the leadership space for for much of my career and and managing people. So yeah, it's always been something that I've aspired to do, and. Um, I think uh, within a footy realm, you can always be a little bit more blunt, a bit more honest, and I think that helps me in my work work career as well. So, yeah, cool. Um, in terms of like as a new coach coming in, you obviously want to. Um, you were there last year, so I, I would have thought in terms of what you bring to the footy club, some of the things will stay the same. But what did you think that you'll bring, um, which you want to be implementing at the moment? But um, what we, what are you looking to change for Edifar? Uh, look, just getting back to a little bit of old school mentality. Um, the Edifal Aspendale that I played under and existed um, for a long time was was that really high spirited club that was was never a pushover. And not that we were a pushover last year by any means, but um, you know that team that was you come to Regents Park and and no matter where we were on the ladder, we were always tough to play against. So. Um, Last year, I suppose one of the things I was most disappointed with um, was our tackling pressure. And when you've got the smallest ground in the competition, you would expect that your tackling pressure is is of the highest level. So that's certainly something that um, I'm expecting to see an improvement in. Um, we've worked really hard with Ricky Mirabella, um, who's done. He's really obviously well known around the league, but he's um, been instrumental for us in in doing some fitness work. And the boys are. Are absolutely smashing it now. So in in ISO, they're um they're posting a lot of their runs up on a on a players group, and it's almost become who can um, run the quickest half marathon. Um, I think we're up to about five or six players that have been running 20 k plus um, in a session. So it's been pretty impressive. The boys are pretty driven. Um, so fitness and and I suppose that um, that tackling pressure and and uh, contested footy is certainly something I want to see an improvement in. Yeah, nice, mate. In terms of just following up on that, obviously Rick's doing his program. How's what's your contact like with the group at the moment? Is there anything you're doing in particular? Um, you might have some secrets. Who knows? But um, are you any games going on? What's going on with the boys down there? No, unofficially, we're actually. I started to play around with a few ideas um, just in the last week or so. But um, the boys have been pretty motivated, and, and Rick's been driving a lot of that. Uh, a lot of that fitness work for us, so that's been great. But um, other stuff, we're just doing some tutorial stuff and, and using platforms like Zoom to to run some PowerPoint presentations and, and try and learn some some pretty basic structure sort of things. But th- they'll be great tools for us because obviously with things like this, you can record and watch them later. So um, just to give the players a bit of bit of understanding around uh, where we want them to set up and how we want them to set up in certain certain aspects of the game. So. Not ideal, but it, it's really you've got to take or, or make the most of the the bad situation, and and right now it gives us the opportunity to do a little bit more education stuff, and and that's the opportunity we're taking at the moment. Yeah, I definitely agree. Because obviously we're we're looking to implement some new things down at Bombers as well, and um, obviously 
pre-season you would have been teaching and learning and whatnot, but um, you know some of the boys aren't the smartest tools in the shed down at local footy, so you know you've got to get those PowerPoint presentations up for them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, uh, I went and bought a drone uh, a few weeks back as well, much to the disgust of the uh, the lovely, um, to just try and fly over the top of us as we're doing a few things. And um, I quickly worked out uh, our footy ground is a bit too close to Moorabbin Airport, so shouldn't really be flying that up and uh, and over the boys, but um, and didn't get much of an opportunity before uh, COVID nineteen kicked in. But <laughs> yeah, certainly trying a few different uh, tactics. We uh, we use a drone at work for some of the audits we do and. Um had that exact problem where some of the sites are too close to the airports and they don't let you fly there. <laughs> um, Recruit-wise, mate, um, who did you guys get in this year and, and what did you see them bringing to the footy club? Hopefully this year. Well, hopefully this year. Um, look, we were pretty local this year and we did speak to a lot of people um, about coming down. Um, again, what we were looking to really inject was speed into the side um, a couple of additional midfielders. Um, so they were our first priority. And then um, with big Chris Wiley having a, a bit of a tragic injury in the finals last year and uh, down at Rosebud, we, we certainly needed a Ruckman as well. So um, we've been been really fortunate, Reese Orchard and, and Jackson Stewart, um, who both were at the Stingrays last year, have committed full-time to us. Um, both boys are really fit and, and Jackson did a, a pre-season with Casey. So... Um, they're both going really well, really fit. Um, and then Anthony Carroll is is a ruckman who we picked up who was at Tarwin last year but um, played a lot of his footy at Bo Morris. Um, really competitive guy, really fit um, and just and loves to work hard around the ground. So we're really happy with them. Joel O'Sullivan, um, another boy that's come back to us, was at uh, Mornington last year. So um, And then we've probably just uh, reinvigorated the passion of a couple of the, the local boys as well. Um, Elliot Maguire, who uh, I know a lot of the uh, the viewers will know, um, played a lot of footy at EFL Aspendale last year. He was in and out a little bit um, in, in twos footy and he's hardly missed a beat. So we're really happy with how we've been able to to get some of those guys reinvigorated and, and, and passionate about playing footy again. So, um, you know, EFL Aspendale, as per any um, local footy club, really relies on its local talent. And then, uh, you know, the, your players that you go out to recruit are obviously just topping up the, the, initial, uh, the initial talent that you have there. So, look, we're, we're, um, we're pretty realistic about where we're, where we're at, but um, we think that we've, we've recruited well enough to, to improve around speed and, and, and the run around the footy, which is what we were talking about earlier. Um, in terms of this year, mate, what are your thoughts on going forward? What do you think needs to happen for us to be able to get a season done? How does it how does it structure out? What does it look like to you? Yeah, very good question. And and uh, so I work in sport and rec field as well. So um, and work down the Mornington Peninsula area, managing um, some of the recreation centre and uh, Pelican Park in Hastings. So very much in this space on a day-to-day basis in terms of uh, how we're going to be able to start sport back up. So, look, it's, a, it's, it's really an unknown and every person you speak to is, is totally different. I, I heard that basketball are looking for a July 1 start. Um, just today I heard that. So, um, and they're looking at, at uh, 25 people per court, so 10 players per side, coaches, scorers, um, pretty much giving that 25. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting. I think no matter what happens, if we start, it'll be without crowds, which will be really interesting at the local level. You obviously see it at AFL level and it, um, there, there's a, a lack of atmosphere. But I think, you know, that's what we need to understand is that it's not going to be a normal season. The players are going to have to to sacrifice the money that they're playing for. Um, and uh, we, we're just going to have to rely on technology. So um, the likes of Game Face and 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 things are, are going to have to, you know, help us in that digital world so people can still connect with their local team and, and see how they're running. But I think if we can get an, a nine-season um, game, we know that that's going to be the fairest that we can make it. Um, I think from a Division One perspective, always playing everyone twice has, has just been the fairest draw that you can get. So... If we can play everyone once, I think uh, we'll have to look at restricted finals. So whether it becomes like cricket a little bit and 
one plays four, two plays three, and the winner of both those games go and play a grand final. So you've got two weeks of finals instead of four. I think uh, no one would begrudge that. And uh, I just hope that um, if we get to at least that as a minimum, that that um, people don't view it as a, a year with an asterisk next to it, that we've really done our best to get a quality season in, a fair season in. Um, beyond that, and, and I've chatted to, to the, the press about this, uh, if they do rule a line through the season, I'm still really keen to see if we can get at least games of footy, whilst they might not mean anything from a competitive point of view, um, to get at least four or five clubs together and see if we can rotate round and play a bit of a round robin sort of thing. So, and do it over the time that we have available. And that obviously lends itself to other questions around insurance and things. But you know, I think it's important, particularly um, for the older guys, that um, they at least get a couple of games under their belt um, for the year, so that. It encourages them to go on for next year and and move forward into 2021. Yeah, yeah, you make some good points, mate. I'm very big on the. I think nine games has to has to be the minimum. Like you said, just making in terms of fair um, a fair playing field that everyone plays each other. I like the idea of the one plays four, two plays three to potentially minimise the amount of finals games there are. I haven't heard that one actually. Um, and any game of footy sounds good to me. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll go up to Darwin this year if I have to have a kick. I've got to stay <laughs> motivated. Well, that was probably the other one that I've discussed with a few people is that it, I would expect that AFL Vic needs to really make the decision um, as a collaborative because if they're going to leave it up to, to individual competitions as to whether they go forward or not, we're going to see a lot of movement around transfers and things, and I think that will hurt local clubs and the local competition more than anything. So if it's left up to individual comps and the Eastern say we're playing and MPNFL say we're not, then we're going to see a lot of movement because I know the boys are just going to want to play. So I think the decision needs to come from above um, because otherwise it could it could wreak havoc on, on certain competitions. Yeah, um, I think also some, some competitions are talking if their season goes ahead that um, say, for example, our comp, we go to nine games, that the salary cap would be reduced to half. And like you say, if the you know, overseeing body um, has one leg, they're cutting to half, and the other leg's got full expenditure. Like you say, transfers could become massive where, you know, some players are, you know, I'm not saying everyone's driven for money, but, you know, each and to their own. Some guys have got families and, and, you know, are looking for that extra dollar here and there if they can. So... I think the, the overall factor needs to be that the, the governing body makes sure all leagues are doing the same thing. Absolutely. You make a great point. And a lot of people begrudge footballers for being able to be paid for what they do on the weekend. But um, and not to, to tarnish all footballers with the same brush, but if that's what you're great at, then you should be able to earn a living out of it. You know, If you're great at, at accounting, you can earn more money being an accountant. If you're great at footy, you should be able to go out and earn a little bit more money by doing that if you're not the greatest tradesman or you're not the sharp, sharpest tool in the shed. So it's a really good point. I think it's going to be one that um, you know it, it needs to be fair and it's probably a good opportunity that, that AFL Vic or... At the AFL in general actually look at um, competitions across the board and say we want to flatten flatten the uh, salary cap across every competition. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it. It's certainly these are the opportunities that they get to take to to make big calls and and uh, and and make the or total line from that point forward. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Is their chance to make some good changes? Mm. And um, work-wise, mate, you're still working, or what's your situation? I know you said it's the Somerville Recreational Centre. Is that what it's called? Yeah, so we got Somerville Rec. Um, so I work for a, a group called Belgravia Leisure, who are a management company. So we manage um, recreation facilities on behalf of uh, generally councils. Yep. So uh, we work for Mornington Peninsula Shire, who are a really great partner. Um, so we're We've actually, we're announced as um, management company for the Rosebud Aquatic Centre, which is yet to be named and there will be a, a, a naming um, part come through. But so there's lots of work going through with that. It's supposed to open um, January 2021. So lots of planning um, involved for that. And it's going to be an amazing site. And um, I think for the Rosebud uh, Footy Club and and the, the sporting clubs around there, Dramana, they'll get a pretty good, good uh good advantage out of being able to use that. So it's um, a great little centre that's about to pop up in a, in about uh, eight months' time. 
Yeah, they won't have to go to the bay on a uh, Sunday morning and jump in. <laughs> yeah, good hydro pool that's going in there. So, yeah, they'll, they'll have some really good facilities to use. Awesome, mate. Thanks for coming on, mate. That's all i got for you. Um, hopefully see you during the year in those nine games that I'm planning on uh, turning up for. Um, thanks for, for waiting tonight and um, good luck with your coaching, mate, and I'll see you uh, around the traps. Cheers. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, mate.